Hello and welcome to our Wednesday webinar from the IEA Clinical Centre. My name is Benedicta and I'm part of the communications team here. Our monthly webinars are based on our technical reports, which are available from our website, www.iea-co.org. Residents of member countries and employees of our sponsoring organizations can download our reports at no charge after one-off registration. I should just say, um, please type any questions to Ian as we go along and we'll try to answer them at the end of the webinar. The subject for today's webinar is advances in non-energy products from coal, presented by Dr. Ian Reid. Over to you, Ian. Oh, thank, thank you, Benedicta. Well, welcome to today's webinar from the IEA Clinical Centre. Uh, we, we last reported on uh, coal products uh, about three years ago, and since, since then there have been many, de many developments in this topic, so I hope you find something of interest. Um, as Benedicta says, please put in questions uh, as, you, as we go along, and, um, but for for much more detail, the, the full report will be out in early April. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I, I'm Ian Reid. I'm, I'm an author at the IEA CCC. And uh, prior to joining, my background was in uh, gas oil, petrochemicals, and uh, coal gasification. So, so quite relevant to, the, to this topic. Um, of course, coal's main uses are for power stations, steel, and cement. Um, but the proportion of coal that's used to make products is approaching about 10% of the total now. And that's a very large increase, even from when I uh, discussed this before. Uh, coal products range from chemicals to extracting minerals, nanomaterials, and once transformed, these can be used in our latest technologies, the electric vehicles, wind turbines, um, new buildings, the largest sector, though, is cold chemicals, and that in, includes both pitch and gasification. Um, it covers hundreds of products, uh, including many house, household names, and also uh, plastics and fibres. But since we last discussed this, the industry has taken a, a step change in scale. Uh, so why use coal as a feedstock? Well. It's a, a plentiful, abundant resource, and, and it is expected to remain available at low cost. It's now around $85 a ton for thermal coal. Uh, and especially for carbon materials, the high carbon content can be an advantage. Uh, oil and gas are preferred for chemical feedstocks. And um, currently, the, the oil prices are, are quite low, but they do vary. and uh, LNG as well. It's very variable prices, as you can see here, and and, and with the winter effects, uh, have uh, spiked very high recently. The electrif electrification of energy is uh, underway, and um, where a bigger proportion of our energy use will be electric for transport, mo mobile devices, heating and cooling, and mineral and carbon. Uh, the mineral and carbon products from coal can contribute to that change. And lastly, there's a rising population, uh, currently more than a million more people every week. And the result is a massive pressure on the supply of raw materials for our industry and buildings. Uh, when, when I uh, looked at uh, products from uh, fly ash, the, the price of fly ash was rising around 8% a year and cement around 6%. So, uh, and I just noticed that um, iron ore prices have peaked this week. And that's all reflecting this huge pressure on uh, building materials. So, uh, <coughs> where can coal fit in? Um, this is just uh, looking at the overall uh, products you can, you can obtain. Um, and, and the chemicals, which is represented by the by our reactor on the right, uh, there's both pitch and gasification chemicals. I'm, I'm going to focus on gasification ca uh, chemicals today. Um, the, the conversion of coal to syngas is then used to make plastics and fibres, 
And new capacity is making coal a world-scale resource of, of these products, where really it was a, a few years ago, it was really a niche industry. Uh, graphene, uh, I've shown there, uh, a two-dimensional uh, planar structure of carbon is, is perhaps the most exciting of carbon nanomaterials. Uh, carbon uh, nanotubes, that's long, thin tubes of carbon, were the first uh, mainstream nanomaterial and uh, now have a multi-billion dollar market, mainly reinforcing plastic and fibers. But graphene is more versatile and has many more applications. Uh, it's a rapidly developing market and an important one for coal, as, as we'll see in this presentation. Uh, on carbon fiber at the top, uh, last time I talked about it, it was more about comparing the properties of pan and pitch fiber. Um, pan fiber is obtained from petrochemicals, from propane and polyacrylic nitrile, forming polyacrylic nitrile. Um, and since then, the, the adoption of fiber in the uh, aircraft market is near complete. Even, even safety critical engine casings are made from fiber. And that gives an indication of the safety of using this material. Uh, to break into other markets, though, the price of fiber must come down. And uh, given the link between pan and oil prices, this is probably only possible by adopting pitch fiber. And I'll look at uh, uh, the application for automotive and construction in a bit more detail. Uh, acti activated carbon is important in the purification of liquids from water, water to uh, chemicals. And the tightening of fresh water supplies is increasing demand for, for uh, this, this key product. Uh, in the uh, Ramco IPART concept, uh, where coal mining and product synthesis will take place at the same location, avoiding transport of coal, um, the activated carbon we have, will, is intended to be a base product. Uh, the use of synthetic graphite in, uh, for electrodes, and here it's shown in a nuclear reactor, uh, but also batteries. Uh, there's about 30 kilo in a, of uh, carbon in a graphite carbon in, in a, a car battery. Um, has been a difficult market for pitch products due to sulfur and coal, but the tightening and availability of graphite and rising demand for batteries has re uh, regained interest in using coal pitch as a feedstock for. Uh, for synthetic graphite. Um, rare earth elements, uh, I've shown this periodic table here, but it really is just a lot of nice and uh, scandium and yttrium. Um, the supply is uh, entirely obtained from, from China uh, with, with some, some contribution from, it, from Australia and other sources. Um, the growth in demand and the Political issues around the su supply of uh, rare earth ed elements is making it more urgent to find other resources, and coal can be a resource. Uh, yesterday, FT reported that China may increase export controls over uh, rare earth elements, raise raising this issue. Um, if um, we just start looking at uh, chemicals. Uh, this this is the uh, GE uh, Texaco gasifier uh, for uh, coal flurries, uh, an oxygen uh, 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 fire device uh, to make some gas. Um, when we uh, consider coal to chemicals, the industry is focused in China, although there are more recent announcements for plants in Africa, India, Indonesia and Pakistan. So the coal to chemical sector is uh, on, on a growth path. It's already doubled in capacity since our last report uh, overall. And by early 2020, there were about 150 new plants, mostly associated with uh, gasification, but also coal and tar upgrading and additional tar chemicals facilities. Between 2023, we expect a further increase uh, of, of another 200 plants. The core technology is coal gasification to syngas using reactors like these, although China is developing its own designs for, for their industry. The plan at the moment is adding about 10 million tonnes a year of methanol, and that can be converted to plastics and fibres. 
and I've given some details here. And I've also added in some information on SNG to uh, supply a, a, a domestic uh, methane market, ammonia for making urea, which is um, a combination of carbon dioxide and, and ammonia. Overall, it's a massive undertaking. It, it, it is impressive. <clears throat> uh, it, it amounts to over 350 plants in China uh, over the next few years. Um, and the plants in their countries. So coal to chemicals is becoming a major player. And that leads to, to challenges. And I've, I've, got, I've got the main ones here. Uh, the first one is um, uh, the industry competes with um, petrochemicals directly. And over the last few years, the oil prices have been very low. The carbon in intensity from coal is greater meaning CO2 emission is higher. And uh, there's a, a global concern over waste plastic materials. But we just take these in, in turn. The analysts consider to break even oil price is about $60 per barrel. And it, it just went over $60 yesterday, this, this last week. Although the, but the expansion of chemicals, of cold chemicals, has taken place when oil prices have been much lower. So it, that suggests there's more robustness to the, the price than, than we thought. The long-term projection for, for oil prices from, from a, a number of experts is around 50 to $60 per barrel. But of course, it, it fluctuates. The, uh, the, the, the situation in China is quite different to the United States, where the low gas prices uh, there, I mean, that cold chemicals would be unattractive. If we move to the uh, high carbon uh, intensity issue, th to make me methanol from coal, it's necessary to reject carbon dioxide. So the syngas from, from that gasifier I showed you is uh, converted in a shift reactor to get the right proportions of CO and uh, hydrogen. Over the whole process, Depending on the product, the, the factor uh, compared to petrochemicals is about three to six higher CO2 than oil and gas. The scale of emission is now about a billion tons of CO2. And uh, that's out of a total uh, emission in China of 11.7 billion tons. So we're rapidly reaching 10% uh, and, and we think there's another 100, 200 plants to go in. The CO, CO2 capture is relatively small and aims to be about 5 million tonnes over the next few years. Um, but of course, uh, CO2 is, it goes into uh, urea, as I, as I was showing you earlier. There's a big issue though. And the final uh, part is uh, plastic waste. Uh, it's common to both coal and oil uh, industries producing plastics and fibers, but it's, a, it's a, an issue of increasing importance. Uh, plastics and fibers have been found in all water supplies and they're moved by governments, including China, to reduce waste. That may affect what is produced uh, and where in the future with, a, with a, a significant effect on this on this new coal industry. Uh, next, we're going to look at um, rare earth elements. And I, I've already mentioned the uncertain supply of rare earth elements, but, this, but put that more into context that nearly all our new industries need, need, need these elements, whether in mobile phones, electric cars, wind farms, a five megawatt wind turbine needs about a ton of neodymium, and the next generation will be 19 megawatt turbines. And each electric vehicle needs a kilo of that element for the motor. So if we make 60 million electric cars a year, which is what, what is projected, and China is already planning 2 million this year, demand is set to outstrip the supply of rare earth elements without considering export limits. The uh, the rare elements are, are mainly the lanthanides shown here, and they're split into light and heavy 
depending on the atomic weight, and it's, the heavier ones are somewhat scarcer. When uh, we look beyond mineral deposits, second cools were known to have high uh, PPM levels of these elements, and that led to research programs to recover them. The focus now is on concentrating RE from coal wastes, either directly from uh, tailings or from waters collected from mine workings. And research has already confirmed that this is technically feasible. The treatment of waste of special interest is, as in addition to avoiding new mines, removing these lithonides and, and other heavy metals present in the, in the waste, it improves water quality downstream. And, and that's, a, that's a big contrast to how rare earth element mining is currently regarded. There are new research techniques uh, coming through which uh, may help. Membranes that concentrate uh, rare earth element slurries from acid mine waters, so that a more concentrated uh, mixture is, it can be treated in a refining plant. There are plasma treatments that increase the porosity of coal, making it more accessible to reagents to extract the rare earth elements. And, and, and quite excitingly, I think, uh, new chelation ligands that are last night specific. And that's possibly a route to change how all RE are concentrated. So it's definitely worth watching. The processes are there to concentrate RE, and the race is on to make, make these more cost competitive with mined rare earth elements and more environmentally benign. And so next, we're going to look at um, uh, carbon fiber. And uh, I've, tried, I've split that into uh, construction and automotive. And, the, and the, um, the, the issue is that the pace of construction has reached unprecedented levels. And I've represented this by one of our new cities, Songdo in South Korea, uh, which features the, the Northeast uh, Asia Trade Tower in the, in the center. The rate of construction in China, in particular, exceeds that of the USA during the 20th century and has recently accelerated, uh, confirmed by the record iron ore prices we've just seen. And as our cities are built using sand for the concrete, there's a shortage of river sand. Illegal extraction is now uh, a multi-billion dollar criminal activity. I saw something like $200 billion, which uh, surprised me. How can uh, coal help them? Well, carbon fiber products made from coal pitch offer a, a new material that can be tailored for many different applications. Roof tiles that can replace terracotta or asphalt tiles, alternative insulation materials, uh, rebar that can replace uh, uh, iron, re reducing corrosion risks, uh, fiber wrappings to strengthen uh, existing structures, uh, there, could be, there is potentially a, a revolution here on, on how um, uh, construction materials are, 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 are used. A, a key issue has been uh, how, carbon how, how will carbon fiber um, behave in a fire situation? And because these materials are graphitic, they, they show good fire resistance. And, uh, and, if, and there's even um, resistance to fire in the presence of open flames. And that's why carbon fiber is used for the jet engine casings that I mentioned earlier, and also carbon foam materials are used as rocket engine exhaust cones. So there's, there's a lot of potential there. Strong and lightweight fiber insulation materials fit well with a strategy to have passive building uh, half of our energy use is in heating and cooling buildings. And so coal carbon fiber products could make an important contribution here. And the key is to get the price at a competitive level. The pr process are under development, but new products are already in the marketplace. And turning to uh, transport, um, the, the picture here is of a, a, a neo uh, SUV vehicle that has a, a carbon fiber uh, battery containment system. 
Uh, carbon fiber is the preferred material for aircraft and the CO2 emission savings for aircraft are dramatic, something like 1,200 tons of CO2 per ton of fiber. The case for fiber in auto transport is less obvious and emission savings, it's much, much lower. But then if we do make 60 million units, it, that, that will be substantial. In EVs, the, the battery pack weighs between half and one ton for larger vehicles. And that affects the ultimate range. And that's one of the main concerns uh, for, for buyers of these vehicles. A switch to fiber for structural parts will help, especially on the smaller cars. The, uh, the, the, the NEO has a, a subframe and also the battery containment system. The, uh, the, the, the benefits of carbon fiber they aren't just in weight because they're chemically resistant. So they resist con corrosion or uh, if there was a problem from the battery, it, it would be uh, resistant to that. And it also, also has uh, uh, thermal properties it can help control the, the temperature within the car, especially during heavy use or recharging when there's heat from the battery. In China, the use for fiber in EVs is scaling up. A new factory produces 60 million pieces a year and is part of a special initiative to introduce carbon fiber in, in auto, auto vehicles. We've already talked about cold chemicals and as part of its coal upgrading strategy, there are new sources of coal tar for pitch fiber with many new companies, all part of China's bid to lead the EV market. Again, cost is key. And the aim is to make pitch fiber at pan quality, but at a lower price of less than ten dollars a kilo, and that compares to aluminium around two dollars. So, so you do need extra advantages from the fiber. Uh, now we'll turn to uh, graph nanomaterials and graphene. Uh, graphene is this two-dimensional uh, nan carbon nan nanomaterial uh, pictured here. Um, in this model. Uh, but it's a very exciting material. It's set to revolutionize material science. Its properties of thermal and electrical conductivity, exceptional strength, and effectiveness as a chemical barrier are some of the features that make it so interesting. Half of graphene is used in lithium ion batteries, but there are many more applications now. I have about 50 commercial uses in the, in the report. Uh, what, one of them was a a graphene coated contact lens that allows you to see in infrared. <laughs> it has some amazing applications. But the question for us is can we make graphene from coal? And is the quality there? In our last report, we described a chemical route to quantum dots, an electrochemical method to graphene sheets. And the first, the first of those was already commercial. And the graph, graphene electrochemical method has just been patented. But there are two new methods uh, making graphene from coal. The, the first is a molten salt technique that looks to remove more reactive carbon, leaving graphene fragments. In effect, a little like the chemical and electrochemical techniques, removing amorphous carbon. And the other method is more akin to an incandescent light bulb, creating a, a plasma from coal in a few seconds. So it's reaching temperatures around 3000 Kelvin. And on cooling, that reforms into graphene. And uh, well, surprising to me is that graphene is an intermediate product on the route to graphite. The original graphene was obtained from graphite using sellotape to take off layers. So perhaps, perhaps that, that makes sense. As for quality, it, it appears comparable to other methods. A, a US NATL collaboration with the University of Illinois report using graphene quantum dots from coal to make a new type of computer memory device, a memristor, a fast access memory chip that uses resistive rather than capacitance switching and retains data when power is lost. It's seen as the next advance in IT and a remarkable use of coal. Right, from nanomaterials, we'll move to agriculture. Um, and th this is about lignite, uh, the, uh, alternative uses for lignite. There, 
There is increasing concern over the use of chemical fertilizers uh, called MPK, nitrogen phosphate potassium, as more than half of the uh, nitrogen that's applied is lost to harmful ammonia gas or nitrates that contaminate water systems and create an anaerobic conditions. In fact, I, 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 I saw one paper suggesting 80% loss. In, in the um, cold chemical slide, I showed a large new production of urea from ammonia and CO2. But there are moves in some countries to severely limit the use of urea due to the health issues. What alternatives are there? Well, uh, we, we, we've, we've known of uh, aminolysis of lignite to form uh, uh, a humic fertilizer. Um, this, this product is gradually gaining traction, especially among organic farmers, and offers a way to use lignite, which, may, which um, can help to counter poor soil quality. Um, there, there's much evidence for the effectiveness of the product, and um, perhaps the concerns over chemical fertilizers will lead to a much more demand for this material. A another pro project uses raw lignite. Um, it's applied in um, uh, where, where many, uh, large concentrations of animals and absorbs uh, in action um, fr from them. And that uh, product can then be uh, collected and used as a useful fertilizer. Uh, so uh, a use for raw lignite, perhaps. Just, just as lignite becomes a stranded coal asset, and I, I, I notice that uh, Germany now has a, a, a plan to uh, stop lignite use in, in power plants, uh, perhaps this could be used to transform our food production and enhance soils. Um, and given it, how, many, how many people are uh, living with um, uh, uh, problems in food supply, uh, perhaps this is an interesting solution for that. The other uh, potential use for lignite is in the production of hydrogen. And <clears throat> uh, hydrogen is mostly used to uh, hydrogenate chemicals and, uh, and the production of ammonia. But the future use is for power and uh, uh, for a filtrative battery storage, uh, for instance, or to, uh, to uh, power turbines. The renewable ele uh, electricity and electrolysis routes are expensive, and there have been false dawns on the hydrogen economy before. An IA analysis places lignite hydrogen as the lowest cost route, um, about a third of the price of electrolysis. But 10 million tonnes of hydrogen production uh, means 150 million tonnes of carbon dioxide sequestration. The, the most advanced project at the moment is in Australia, and that has met key targets. Uh, for gas, gasification, there's a small pilot producing hydrogen. And of course, the Chinese chemical industry is already based on production of syngas from, from coal and lignite and already produces hydrogen. So any issues there should be surmountable. The trans oceanic transport of hydrogen is possible either through a chemical inter intermediate or as cryohydrogen. And the storage of Gippsland in Australia looks feasible and this is supported by extensive geological analysis of spent fields. The conversion of coal to hydrogen and transport to Japan is essentially an interim technology to establish a hydrogen infrastructure while awaiting a breakthrough in hydrogen from new renewable electricity. And that looks some way off just now. And I'm just going to complete the presentation with some that summarized uh, some of these things. Uh, the growth of the coal chemical sector is remarkable and is now a world scale competitor, producing a full range of chemical products. Processes are, are becoming more efficient and product quality is comparable to petrochemicals, but there are issues. 
the carbon intensity of coal chemicals must be reduced, and that can only be done by implementing carbon capture, which is easier than for coal power plants because of the concentration of CO2. Polymers and fibers production may have to adapt to changing demands, following a global focus on waste and the need to reuse plastic. The latest oil price rise means that coal chem chemicals now have an economic advantage over oil and gas. On carbon fiber, it's integral to aerospace applications already and has replaced aluminium in aircraft. And, and fire resistance was the key issue. Now we look to ground transportation and construction. Coal is an alternate abundant resource, perhaps the only one of, the, of a scale to, to compare with uh, concrete. And of course, the, the manufacture of cement is one of the highest industrial sources of CO2. It is impossible to get pan fiber prices low enough to compete in car manufacture, but it's believed that optimization of pitch fiber will get there. And the benefit of fiber isn't just for weight and electric vehicle range. Also, there's a lot of interest in hybrid pan and pitch fiber that can uh, overcome uh, uh, quality issues with, with pitch fiber in, in the shorter term. And uh, for graphene, it is really a, truly a, a revolutionary material. And in many ways, it's superior to carbon nanotubes and, and it's likely to take much of their market. There are four pathways from coal to graphene now. And coal may be an advantage feedstock in, in, in some cases, for instance, um, where coal is over 85%, the uh, fast dual heating method uh, doesn't require purification. And this, so this may accelerate the use of graphene and lowering the cost is critical as addition of small amounts in say concrete can, can remarkably increase the strength of the material, meaning we need less of it. Developments in agriculture and decarbonized fuels offer an alternative use for lignite as it falls out of favor for power plants and may become a stranded asset. The effectiveness of humic products in agriculture is well established and the growing concern over the use of urea may be an opportunity. And finally, uh, I couldn't cover everything here. So um, some of the other uh, uh, issues are uh, product, or products from, from, uh, from coal, include thin coal films, which I think are sort of falling um, on after um, graphene, where the research is so focused just now. Uh, Residence 3D print, printing, I, I did mention foams, but they're an important area. Uh, electrodes, um, graphene is mostly used in, in, in making electrodes uh, as, as, as they're used as barriers to protect the electromaterials from the electrolyte. Uh, composite materials, uh, there is uh, extensive use of uh, carbon materials to strengthen, strengthen uh, uh, plastics and fibers. Um, I've mentioned hybrid fiber, after carbon I've mentioned, now the, di now the diamonds, a new area, people, people have uh, made down the diamonds from coal, uh, it could have important medical applications, and uh, graphene is also expected to uh, be important in medical arena. Um, I'll, just before I go, I'll mention that we're building a network of knowledge partners um, with the IA Clinical Centre, and uh, they're on, on this slide if you want to have a look at that. Um, that's an important development for, for the station. So I'll, I'll draw a halt there and, uh, I, and I invite questions. So let me have a look at um, um, 
I'm just looking for the, the questions tab. Oh, you are. Right. <clears throat> I'm sorry, sorry for the delay here. Uh, oh, how to dispose of carbon fiber material is the first question. Uh, the, the recycling of carbon fiber is at quite an early stage, but it's already being done. But, but mostly uh, off cuts of uh, fiber are recycled at the moment. But it, it, it's possible to recycle it. Um, uh, what coal rank resource is best suited to graphene and carbon fiber? I'm guessing anthracite, but that is less in abundance than lower rank coals. Thanks. Um, well, the, um, the fast fuel heating method I, I mentioned won't take any coal. And in fact, uh, as a commercial plant in Canada is going to uh, take plastic waste and turn it into graphene, which is uh, very surprising. Uh, for carbon fiber, it's the pitch extracted from coal that's going to be used to produce carbon fiber. And the next question, we, we're told renewable electricity is now party with grid costs and the cheapest option. Does the cost of electricity uh, process need to have meaning solar and wind have to be one cent per kilowatt hour. Um, I, I think that uh, some of the figures I've seen are with free electricity, electrolysis uh, to hydrogen is um, uh, $3,000 a tonne, which is more than lignite with CCS and sequestration. Um, once, once you add in electricity costs, they, 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 it, it rises. So the, the base, the base cost of, of the electricity of the process is around that. Uh, can you compare and contrast the coal products that are most profitable versus uh, the ones that provide the greatest potential volume of coal usage? Uh, well, it, it, the nanomaterials are clearly the most profitable. They're, they're, they're very high value, uh, but, but you use very small amounts of them. Um, but, but I think, um, uh, in, in the I Park, uh, using all the the, uh, the coal feedstock is is the way to go. I I I, I, I think that uh, with um, activated carbon and then releasing the the pitch that can then be used for fiber and nanomaterials and all the rest. A very interesting concept. Um, can you comment on the prospect of coal pitch fiber and hybrid pitch pine fiber? Uh, well, I think the uh, prospects for hybrid pitch pan fiber um, will depend on uh, how quickly the quality of coal pitch fiber can match power. Uh, it, it can be it can be done. Uh, I've had a table in the report showing um, a number of products that are comparable in properties. The, the issue with pitch fiber has been uh, flaws in the in the fiber that uh, create weak, weak points. Uh, actually, there's work on using graphene that uh, it, that maps onto any flaws in a, in a fiber and increases the strength. So, so it's a complex uh, topic. I think that um, in the short term, uh, people have added 25% pitch fiber to power fiber and seen very, very, very little change in, in uh, properties. So it could, it could be a short term measure. Uh, what about other coals besides lignite, can we use those for the same applications you mentioned? Um, lignite, um, I, I think I, I, I'm struggling to answer that. Uh, uh, re, uh, for, for the uh, graphene application, then you would wish to have um, a high carbon content because that, that means the uh, uh, purification stage can be avoided. Uh, for fiber, you're after the uh, pitch and you want a reasonable uh, level of, of pitch, uh, a reasonable content of pitch. So lignite is not really suitable for that. Uh, I, I, I think I've, I've uh, the, the hydrogen and the uh, 
or the actual to applications are perhaps more interesting. Um, is there any strategy to twist the common narrative very Uh, oh yeah. Uh, why is there is there a, a, a chance to change how coal is regarded? Um, in our consultancies, work we work we face a huge uh, resistance to coal. Uh, well, um, we've been looking at rare earth elements. Uh, there's going to be a massive shortage of rare earth elements soon, as uh, the, the world gears up to use electric vehicles, for instance, and. Um, and our new and our new high technology industries all require them, and the resource even China controls the resource at the moment, but but it, it, but it's it's finite, and that's where uh, coal com, coal comes in. And actually, coal wastes are a very uh, attractive way to to uh, uh, attractive resource for rare earth elements. Um, but when you look at construction. If we can produce materials that are uh, can take the place of existing construction materials, that that uh, that alleviates a, a massive issue because some people have said we need a planet and a half to meet current demands. So, so an alternative resource is very attractive. Uh, we looked at carbon fiber and, uh, and, and how that how that reduces the fuel consumption of, of materials. How how products are are being used. It's very important. Uh, e even though uh, I, I, I've talked about the carbon intensity of coal chemicals and the uh, uh, that needs to be addressed, at the, at the same time, um, it, it will uh, reduce the uh, risks of, of excessive um, charges for products if the oil and gas prices rise substantially in the future, which they, they fluctuate all the time. Is it possible uh, to extract humic solid substance from carbon reject? Um, it, 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 for, hu for the humic acid uh, 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 products, it, you want immature coals that um, can be can be uh, uh, converted to uh, humate. Uh, if, if you leave li lignite in, in air, it will eventually turn it back to humate. Uh, so, but more mature coals, no. Um, the commercial examples of lignite to humus, yes, yes, uh, Novi Hum is producing that product. Are there intractable challenges with storing syngas at high pressure? Um, I, I think I think the question is maybe more about uh, hydrogen. Um, the uh, hydrogen can be stored at cryogenic conditions. Um, for ele current electric vehicles, it's stored at 700 bar in carbon fiber uh, tanks. Um, so not intractable, but there are losses um, uh, because of the very low cryogenic temperatures for hydrogen. You, you, you're more risk of, of, uh, of losing it compared to LNG. Uh, can weather coal be used for hydrogen production through electrolysis? Um, no, uh, no. Um, uh, yeah, elect elect electrolysis is a um, uh, conversion of water to hydrogen. Um, it, that's competing with uh, that's that's what's called green hydrogen. That competes with uh, uh, coal or natural gas to hydrogen, which, if you sequester the carbon dioxide, is termed blue hydrogen. Uh, but um, it's a it has gasification for coal, electrolysis for water. Uh, um, oh, crumbs. Uh, what coal rank is resource best suited for uh, graphene and carbon fiber? Uh, I think we've done that one. Hold on. I think it's a job. Hold on. Um, Yeah, a, a question about um, ash content in coal and how that affects um, uh, choosing choosing coal for production for carbon, carbon fiber. Um, it's it, it, the best the best the best feed feedstocks 
will, will be a low arsenic substance, but they'll be separated out. Uh, if you extract uh, 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 coal tar pitch, you'll leave you'll leave the mineral, minerals behind. Um, of all the products from coal, which one? Do you think it's the promising product economically and is the brightest pro prospect? <laughs> um, I, I, I'll tell you what, all the products I've talked about are on growth rates right now, from active, activated carbon to fiber to nanomaterials, demand is rising because they've got attractive properties. Um, Someone asked about the challenges about ash content in coal. Um, yeah, I, I, I talked about ash in, in, in my last study, and um, and uh, the, the the issues of, of uh, high ash in uh, in coal coal fired combustion is uh, fouling of uh, boilers and uh, loss of efficiency, and um, uh, but uh, but extracting fly ash, fly ash is becoming a very attractive product. In fact, it's uh, rising in value steadily as the concentration as the construction industry uh, gathers pace after the pandemic. So a very a very complicated topic. And and I think that brings me to the end of the um, end of the questions. Thank you very much for all those questions. <laughs> That's been quite challenging. <laughs> Um, Benedict. Yeah, thank you very much, Ian. Um, I'm left for me to say is just the slides from this webinar will be available to download from the webinar page of our website shortly. And uh, the next webinar from us will be on Wednesday, the 17th of March, same time, presented by Dr. Andrew Metchner. Thank you all for joining us today and goodbye.